I'm joined now in the studio by Zoe Cohen of Just Stop Oil. Welcome to you. Thanks so much for coming in. So why did Just Stop Oil decide to disrupt a performance of Les Miserables? Uh, why not? Well, why not? The people in the audience might say that they paid a lot of money for their tickets and wanted to see a show and didn't really want to, to mm. see Just Stop Oil on stage. But, um, with respect and love, Anna, I think you fully well know why we do this. You know, you've just been reporting more Matvai's in the Mediterranean, haven't you? And you've been reporting um, the absolute acceleration of global temperatures, record-breaking temperatures all summer. Like, the threshold that world scientists were telling, screaming at politicians to avoid, we've gone past it now. Like, decades earlier. Young, young people are desperate. Their parents are desperate, their grandparents are desperate. Why wouldn't young people do anything peaceful to try to save humanity's future? I mean, it's insane to think that a theatre performance is more important than food on the table. And yet, for those people in the audience, they will feel we've spent a lot of money on our tickets, this is an important day for us, there's another time, perhaps, to have that debate, not when we've come to see a show we might have been looking forward to for many yeah. months. I know, I know you used to present the climate show on Sky, didn't you? Yeah. My heart's really beating fast because I feel like I'm on the Don't Look Up movie. Like, we don't have to keep the, the news light anymore. We have to tell the truth. How many people have to die? You know, Oxfam say that people are dying every few seconds in the Horn of Africa because of extreme climate doubt, drought. 40, uh, 14 million people in this country are struggling to eat because of the cost of greed crisis and the cost of oil and the cost of living. And heatflation, which is term, a term that people probably don't hear, but it's the fact that the climate crisis is driving up food costs. Heatflation is going to go up and up and up. Unless we have a government who cares, or we the people take control, that's what we need, we need to do. There's no one to vote for. You know, you can't... The, the Tories are bonkers. Labour's not much better. Who can you vote for who's actually going to end new oil and gas and give us the tiny sliver of a chance of a future? But do you want to get people on board? Because the, pe the question people might be asking is, I think uh, uh, during last night's performance, Just Our Boyle asked the audience to join the rebellion. Absolutely. But is there a risk you're turning people off your cause with this kind of action? I mean, There's I know that... There's no evidence of that, Anna. Honestly, with, with love and respect to you and your family and everyone listening, there is no evidence of that. Uh, the British people can discern between being frustrated at Just Stop Oil and being devastated and terrified about climate collapse. You all know the difference. You can suss that. You're not stupid. You, they know the difference. Uh, and more people are joining us all the time. Have you seen Chris Packham's documentary from a couple of weeks ago? Is it time to break the law? He sets out the case very, very clearly. People have broken bad laws throughout history. And yet, other protest groups have decided that they are perhaps switching people off their cause. Extinction Rebellion have decided that they are shifting tactics away from disruption and civil disobedience. They feel perhaps they can get more people on board with other methods. They haven't moved away from civil disobedience. They've taken decisions to do actions in different ways. And I was there at the big one, along with, uh, you know, people in, from Extinction Rebellion, other movements, Just Stop Oil members, there were 100,000 people surrounding Parliament. It was beautiful, peaceful, inclusive, family-friendly. It was absolutely wonderful, whole weekend, and it got almost no media coverage. And yet, five young people disrupting a theatre production gets loads of coverage. We have to do this. It's morally wrong to take action that is ineffectual. But is it, is it all positive coverage for you, is my question. Is it all about... We're having Will people think, I'm going to greed up on those issues, or are people going to think, <laughs> you know, if I go to an event this summer, if I go to Wimbledon or the Ashes or go to another event, it could get disrupted? I am struggling for words, Anna. 10,000 people swept to sea in Libya. Millions of people in this country struggling to eat. Hundreds of millions around the world suffering from climate drought, etc. right now. How many more people have to die before it's OK to do the most simple, basic thing? I guarantee you that yourself and everyone watching is only going to regret what they didn't do. Everyone watching needs to go to JustStopOil.org and come to a talk and join us on the streets from the 29th of October. You will not regret it. The only thing that people will regret in the years to come is that you didn't take action. This is only going one way, and you and everyone here knows that. You started the Sky Climate Show. When we, ha you know, we have, in the year to come, we have the acceleration going off the scale with El Nino. We've already crashed through thresholds that we were supposed to reach in decades. 
how worse does it have to get? How many kids have to die? How many more young people have to do this stuff? I don't know what else to say, Anna. Why aren't you on the streets with us? That's all I can say. How do you explain your inaction? How do you explain it? Everyone here, all the presenters that we talk to, how do you explain your inaction? How much longer are you going to keep this journalistic objectivity up? Until the water's lapping at your ankles? Until your own kids haven't got food? How long? And, and for Just Off Oil, what's next? Will you continue to, to disrupt events or of what's, what's, the, what's, of the, what's the plan? Because it's morally wrong to not take the action that we know from history has got some chance of having an effect. We has, it has some chance. When we come together as ordinary people, we can do so much. This whole system tells us that we're powerless. Loads of people, you sit in at home, I talk to lots of people, I've talked to some of your backroom staff, people feel powerless. We are the opposite. When we come together, we have enormous power. There are so many more of us than there are of them. You know, come together, it's joyful, it's liberating, it's empowering. Come on the streets from the 29th of October. You will feel alive, you will be able to look your kids in the eye. It's that simple. Okay, well, Zoe Cohen, we appreciate you coming in. Thanks very much indeed for, for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you.